Hey guys, Matthew Fulton with Parkway Business Solutions. During today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the hourly cost rate that's built into QuickBooks Online projects. So let's get started. We'll so the way that you're going to access this information within QuickBooks Online, it's actually pretty easy. You're going to go to your projects window. And once you're on that, you'll see you have this hourly cost rate right at the top here. From the hourly cost rate, the way this will pull up is you're going to see a list of all the different employees so you can choose and add in the cost rate. Now, before we get started here, and I click the calculator, before we get started, I should mention that the use of the hourly cost rates is expected for when you are using a third-party payroll provider. So if you are actually using QuickBooks Online Payroll, it's not necessary to do this because you, if you use the T-Sheets time tracking, you're able to assign specific time people are working on things directly to uh, a project and it's going to do the calculation of this for you. So if you're using a third-party payroll provider, that's when you really would like to use this hourly cost rate calculator. To get started, we're going to go in and we're going to start off just by adding in this specific hourly wage itself. Now, once you enter in the wage, it's going to provide you the traditional employer taxes, you know, the 7.65% minus uh, the Social Security and Medicare, but you're still going to have additional employer taxes that need to come into play as well. In this situation, what, you, what I found to be the most successful way or the easiest way to do this is go in and basically fake up a paycheck for that person for one hour of time. So go in, set it up as you can see here, regular pay, we've got one hour, 1450, and you'll see actually how the different totals came to be. So Social Security, Medicare is how we got our dollar eleven before, and then utilizing the FUDA, the, this is for California, so our SUDA and our ETT, the combined amounts give us our 0.88 per hour of additional employer payroll taxes. Again, these numbers are going to change. Uh, there's quite a few different variances to these numbers. One of them is going to actually be based on the total wages they've earned per year. They have thresholds that once you meet the threshold, certain taxes are no longer deducted. This is, in a sense, one of the complications of trying to use this method because it's not the most accurate. You'll find towards the end of the year, if you're not having certain taxes on the employer side being pulled out, if you've calculated this rate and you didn't change it, you would actually be over-expensing cost uh, to a project. But these numbers are specifically used to, ge to generate within projects uh, the project profitability. And we'll type in our 0.88 cents. Now our next field, workers' compensation, well, that's a bit of a fun one as well. When you're calculating the workers' compensation rate, it's important to know that the, all of the rates are based off of $100 wages earned. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to find out the correct um, workers' compensation class and the rate really based off of the, the declaration page of your insurance policy. Once you have that information, if you haven't already gone into QuickBooks and actually set up the workers' comp class codes per employee, now is a very good time to do so. If you do not have workers' compensation at this time, you fortunately, you can request workers' compensation quotes directly from QuickBooks Online through APNGO. So for our specific example here, what we're looking at is we're going to take our $100, $100 that we need to take the rate for and for a, an administrative person, we are looking at 0.28, which means for every $100 earned, 28 cents needs to be paid to workers' compensation. But first, we need to figure out what is that actual per hour rate. So if we take our hourly wage of 1450 and we divide 100 divided by 1450, I should say, will give us our total 6.897. So in other words, 6.897 hour, uh, hours worked will equal $100 of gross wages earned. We'll then take our 0.28, divide that by the 6.897, and that will give us our four cents per hourly rate of our workers' compensation. So that number there is what we'll go back and enter into QuickBooks Online. So we'll type in our 
And then the last one that we have to deal with will be our overhead expense. So overhead expense, again, this is asking on a per hour basis. So this can be just as much fun to calculate and there's quite a few different schools of thought onto it. But the way we'll go about it today is we're basically gonna take first to calculate our actual overhead expense. So a basic formula gives you that if you were to take all of your gross income, add on any other income that you may also have on your profit and loss, take those two numbers and then subtract your cost of goods sold as well as your net profit, that will provide you the remaining expenses, which will basically equal out to your overhead expenses. Now in a situation, if you had a net loss, of course it's a, you would add the net loss back on. And when you're figuring out the details of what really should be included into an overhead expense, it's the, fix, it's the primarily fixed expenses that occur during the month. There are some exclusions of that, such as, or things that are not fixed, such as your utilities, of course. But traditionally, it's the things that happen month after month after month that are not the materials that go directly towards a job, the labor that goes directly towards a job. You could actually have wages split in between. You could have administrative wages as one item versus the direct labor as another. Um, depends on how your books have been specifically set up. So once you have that number, you would then take it and divide it by the total number of hours worked by all people to give you that weighted average per hour. So in our example that we're showing you here, we had our gross income of 121,000. We did not have any other income, so we didn't add anything there, but we then subtracted the cost of goods sold as well as the net profit to provide you the expenses, as you can see, of 20,415.06. So when we take our 20,415.06 and we divide it by, we're gonna say in this example, two people full-time, full-time being 2,080 hours each. So we would take the 20,415 divided by 4,160 hours would give us a overhead rate per hour of $4.91 per hour. So now we'll switch back over to QuickBooks Online and we'll enter that information in. 4.91 gives us our total hourly cost rate of 21.44. We'll click add and then we'll click save. Very important to save it so we keep that information and then done. Now the reason we did all that is let's go in and let's add in a single time activity under my name. We'll see that the cost rate is now automatically populated of 21.44. We're going to choose a job that we're working on and this one we're going to do our hourly rate here we could choose whether we want it to be billable or not on this one we'll set it to be billable at 125 and we can either do start and end time or we can just do the actual hours itself so we'll go six hours once I have all this information in let's choose the date just a little different we'll go save and close and now, if I come back into this same project, I can actually come over to my time activities. If we come to the specific week here, choose my name, we'll now see that the time we just entered in with these six hours has a total cost immediately assigned to it. Now, these hours were marked as billable, so it's actually attributing the billable amount as well, where the hours above here, this is showing that we had three hours, non-billable time, so driving up the expense to it also. So this impacts the actual project profitability directly by adding in those cost of times. So we hope that showing you how this hourly cost calculator will impact projects and how you can utilize it to really improve your job costing was helpful. Of course, if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out. And more importantly, as always, here's wishing you a very successful week.